So it was close, but that's why you measure it and make sure. Good Tuesday morning, everybody. It's the day before I leave for Truck World. I'm getting excited. I hope to see you there. Attempt number two at delivering these vehicles. Today, they should be here. They weren't here yesterday because it was Easter Monday. Now we've gotta be very careful because we have a Cobra chicken all by himself. I don't know where his family is. We're gonna go and say hello. Hello, Cobra chicken. I'm not gonna hurt you. Would you let me get close to you? Oh, come on, come here. I'm not gonna hurt you. I just wanna show my followers. Oh, he's hissing, he's hissing. Look at these big footprints, eh? Like, look how big those footprints are. Beside like my foot. Huge. <laughs> I'm not gonna hurt you, buddy. I'm not gonna hurt you. We'll leave him alone. If I keep pressuring him, he's gonna attack me. <laughs> You know, I'll, I'll fight a cobra chicken. I just don't want to fight one right now. I got work to do. We've got these heavy ramps on these trailers. Four of them. So one, two, and then the brace in the middle. Three, four. And we store them under here and up here. You see some braces there, some more down there. We also have ramps that uh, go down from the top to here if you want to park a smaller vehicle up there but normally you know normal size vehicles don't fit up there that would be for like an ATV or something you gotta drag these all the way back and set them up over here now these little pieces here you can raise up or down to uh, change the angle of the ramps because some of the vehicles we haul are very, very low to the ground. And uh, you don't want to catch their bumpers anywhere. That would be bad. You've also got to worry about dragging the undercarriage on here as well, right? So I think I'm going to lift that one up. Because uh, on this part here, as the car goes down, you got to make sure that the undercarriage doesn't drag on this that would be bad as well and we try to avoid all the bad <laughs> okay this car is off the trailer and delivered I just have to bring in the paperwork and just make sure that uh, or ask them where they want it or if they want it to just stay back here Now I measured it out and I always stop it at this point, put the parking brake on, put the vehicle in park and I checked to make sure there's clearance. I measured it before I went and I was right, yeah, about a half inch. So it was close, but that's why you measure it and make sure, uh, just in case. Otherwise we got to raise those up even more, but I didn't want to raise that up anymore because this vehicle has a really long front bumper. Like look at the size of this thing, right? And that front bumper is going to come down really close to that ramp when the vehicle goes off that way, right? So let's continue.
Now we're gonna bring our paperwork inside and ask where they want them. And that's the empty trailer. I gotta put those ramps away now and secure them again. And we gotta go back and get another SUV and bring the SUV here as well. Couldn't quite fit three vehicles on one trailer. Not on the step deck. And we have to take the step deck because this one has the ramps. It's the only trailer we can actually unload these cars off at for them, right? They come in uh, in enclosed trailers, but they're higher off the ground. They're like flatbeds or uh, van trailers, right? We don't have a ramp system for them to go all the way down. We do for our ATVs, but not for cars. That's how we do the cars. I just drive the truck. Just went and handed in my paperwork and uh, gonna leave the cars right there. This guy's brought in reinforcements. Two up there. Oh, another one's coming in over there. What's going on, bud? How's it going? Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. I can hiss too. You don't scare me. Crazy cobra chickens. Are you following me? <laughs> I will take you on. <laughs> Tough guy, eh? Tough guy. You wanna go? Hold all these, I'll, I'll put this boot so far up there. Oh, he's coming. He's lining me up. Yeah? <laughs> These geese are actually pretty, if you, uh, especially if they have little uh, goslins or little babies, they get uh, pretty uh, defensive and they'll attack you. I don't know if this guy's gonna attack. I don't think he really wants to fight. He's just acting like a tough guy. Come on, you overgrown chicken. Oh, 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 he's got a backup coming. Better be careful. Don't bug the geese. Don't bug the geese, trucker Josh. Leave the geese alone. I know I can hear your comments already. It's just, it's too tempting. Plus he looked at me funny. Okay, he started it. Look, they're coming. Now they're not gonna leave me alone. <laughs> so that's obviously daddy and mommy. And they haven't hatched their babies yet, but they're probably around here somewhere. I don't know where. Usually we don't have this kind of snow here this time of year. So they're probably wondering like, what the heck is going on? Better not look at me like that again, bud. Hey. I'm just gonna go clean up my trailer. Is that okay? Yeah, we can coexist in this parking lot. I'm not turning my back on you. As soon as I do, you're gonna chase me. I never trust a cobra chicken. Never. Hopefully we can get across here pretty quickly. It's only 10.30 in the morning, so. We're right between the morning rush hour and lunch. Mm, now we got traffic coming from that direction now. I can't tell what road they're on. Uh, 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 looks like they're all going onto the perimeter. Okay, we can go. I will keep posting about this intersection until it's fixed. Should be unacceptable. Very dangerous. But here we are living the dream, right? We're going back for the SUV. We got nothing on the trailer behind us. We'll load that thing up on our outdoor dock, tie it down, bring it back to the same place.
all you Winnipeggers, all you brave souls who live in Manitoba, I have a question for you. Is there any way we could drive the speed limit between McPhillips and Route 90 on the north perimeter? That would be great, thanks. What is this, Quebec? You know, I remember driving in Quebec. Everybody in Quebec drives like 20 under the limit. It seems like everybody there, everybody drives slow. It's just the way they roll, okay? Now this is Manitoba. Here the speed limits are more of a suggestion, you know? You put the speed limit up as 90, everyone's gonna see it and be like, okay, 120. By everybody, I mean everybody but me, obviously. My truck is governed at 100 kilometers an hour. I can't go any further, any faster than 60 miles an hour. That's not by choice. But anyway, you know, it's a suggestion. But for some reason, between McPhillips and Brookside Boulevard, north perimeter headed westbound, everybody goes 70 or like 45 miles an hour. Why? Does anybody else notice this? It's also a problem on the south perimeter between St. Anne's Road and La Jemodier. When you're going towards La Jemodier, eastbound on the south perimeter. And this is the culprit right here. This guy was the guy who was going 70 in a 100 zone. And here I am dawdling along behind him because I can't see in front of him, right? So I would I would have obviously passed, but I couldn't see in front because there's traffic and stuff. So I didn't want to pull out into the left lane and just have to get right back into the right lane. Well, that's a, if there's no space and no one wants to let the truck back in that just got out. They say, well, now you're in the left lane. You want to be in the left lane, now you stay in the left lane. Why you want to be back in the right lane? Why you want to be in the right lane? You should have been in the right lane if you're making a right turn, right? Now you're in the left lane. Too bad you missed your turn exactly how it goes so I wanted to stay in my lane because I was turning right this guy turning you are turning okay I'm gonna go in front of you there's no more traffic I am going for it I'm going for it this guy's a veteran here see you see on our license plates you can uh, it says veteran this is the guy, 70 kilometers an hour in a 100 kilometer an hour zone. I'm sure you're a very nice fella. But step on it, eh? Hey bud, in a very nice way, sorry. Very sorry, sorry about that. Sorry about your truck that it can't go very fast. I'm sorry, there's nothing I can really do about that. I had a coffee, I don't know if you can tell. It was really good. I made it a little too strong, it's one I took from home. I put an extra scoop in there this morning. <laughs> Whoops. Wow, we're gonna get this SUV unloaded fast. I am buzzing, and I only drank half my thermos. Whew, we're almost there, it's just up here on the left. I'm gonna unload this thing. I already showed you how I unloaded the other ones. This one's gonna be exactly the same way, so I won't, uh, I won't go over it all again with you. But uh, I'm gonna quickly get it unloaded. The owner is probably gonna be there, or will be there soon. And I wanna have it ready for them. I wish I had a little bow, I'd put a little bow on it. There you go. There's your present, here's your Lexus. Very nice, very nice. I've come to this neck of the woods three times today now. I'm at this Petro Pass that I hate going to in the big truck, but I'm here in the shop truck. This is the boss's old pickup truck. It's now the shop truck. It has deteriorated slightly since the boss owned it. <laughs> it's. I won't even show you. <laughs> a little rough. But uh, so I guess it's a, an official work truck now. I had to bring uh, my coworker in here to Western Star across the street over there, pick up 3080, which is my old truck. He's driving it back right now. I'm going to take the pickup back and then head home and start packing, getting ready for our flight tomorrow. My flight leaves Winnipeg Airport at 7.20 a.m which means I gotta be there 90 minutes early minimum. So I'll be there two hours early because I'm paranoid about flights. I'm a truck driver, I'm not a pilot. I drive places, I don't fly places. So flying makes me, like flying doesn't make me nervous. It's the getting on the plane on time and the whole process of getting to the airport, getting my tickets, giving them my bags, trusting them with my bags, watching my bags disappear and just hoping that they know where it's going. And then finding the right gate, getting on the plane, getting seated, and then hoping and praying that I'm not beside like a wailing, crying baby or an old, old, snoring, smelly man. 
It's going to be good. Hopefully I'm sitting beside my buddy Cam. Uh, he's from Keystone. He's coming out to Truck World as well. And we're both flying together. So I'm hoping he got us seats together. At least then I'm sitting beside a cool guy. and like, um, A guy I know. And not some random guy who's going to be snoring on my shoulder. Not a big fan of flying. I would much rather drive. But driving takes a lot longer. And we need to get there quick. Because Truck World has already happened for you. So this, these videos are going to be a little delayed, but you've probably already seen footage from Truck World on my channel here. So this will be a little recap. We'll go back into the past and watch, follow my story and watch the videos of the progression getting to the plane and getting to Truck World because my videos all come up a little later. But eh, it'll be a little bit mixed and jumbled, but this is a big event. I'm really excited about it. It's a big deal. And I'm glad you're here uh, tagging along here. I hope I got to meet you at Truck World. If I didn't, at least you're here with us on YouTube. Should be fun. I gotta go home and pack and then go to bed. Because if I gotta be at the airport, let me do the math. Oh no, my brain already hurts. 7.20, two hours early. 7.20, that's 6.20, 5.20. Let's say 5.30, let's make it an even 5.30, gotta be at the airport. I live about an hour and a half away from the airport, 5.30, 4.34. I gotta leave the house at four in the morning. You gotta leave. <gasps> Timmy's isn't even gonna be open at that time yet. I was gonna say you gotta leave time to go pick up Tim's. Okay, I'm gonna have to make my own coffee in the morning then. Okay. I'm gonna have to grab some breakfast to go. Unless I wanna stop at 7 Eleven to get 7 Eleven coffee. No, no, I'll make coffee at home. It's better that way. See what I did to myself today? <laughs> I just won't put the extra scoop in tomorrow. Because, whew, I'm still buzzing. I'm still buzzing. And I already went back to work and I came back in the pickup. It's been a couple of hours. I'm still just. Bzzz. And I'm also very excited about tomorrow. But it's mostly the coffee, I'm pretty sure. But it's mostly that I'm excited about tomorrow flying on a plane so we're gonna land in Toronto it's direct flight because like I was telling you yesterday Toronto is the center of the world if you ask anyone from Toronto uh, so anywhere in Canada to Toronto is like a direct flight don't quote me on that what do I know I never fly but from Winnipeg to Toronto is a direct flight no stops just straight to the center of the world I'm gonna get off the plane tomorrow I think at like 9 30 in the morning go check into our motel and then we got to go to the center uh, the international center I think to start setting up I'll have to check the schedule. Maybe we'll just stay in the motel and hang out. Watch TV. I don't know. I have no idea what's going to happen. I've never been to Truck World before. I'm just going off videos from the past Truck Worlds and uh, what they've told me is going to happen. So I know what's going to happen. I just don't know what's going to happen. We're just going to have to wait and find out. You already know what happens because you've already seen my footage from that day. Follow me on TikTok if you haven't because I'm probably going to post all over TikTok all weekend. I'm new there, okay, so go easy on me. I'm not a young spring chicken, and I'm a little bit old for TikTok, but hey, did you did you hear about this? The old people, we've taken over TikTok, just like we took over YouTube, just like we took over Facebook. <laughs> it used to be a majority of, like, kids from, like, 13 to 21 or 13 to 18. You know, it was like a kid's app at first, right? <laughs> you know, as adults, we couldn't let the kids have anything fun to themselves, so we came onto the app. Now the majority of people on TikTok are between the ages of like 25 to 45. So the adults have taken over TikTok. It's now ours. And we will never give it back. So I'm there as well. Should be fun. I don't know. I'll post it to YouTube as well. Probably a bunch of shorts. We'll see. I don't know. I'm excited. I'm excited. It's going to be fun. I'm flying on a plane tomorrow. Wow. In the sky. Look. <laughs> Up there. In the sky. I'm going to be way up there. Oh, I hope it don't crash. No, we won't crash. We won't crash. Not that long of a flight. 7.20. And we land there. And they're in Eastern Time. We're in Central Time. So if I take off here at 7.30, land there at about 9.30. It's only an hour flight. An hour to get to Toronto. Wow. If I drive to Toronto from here, it takes like 20 to 24 hours, depending on the weather. It saves a bit of time. No wonder they wanted me to fly. Eh. <laughs> Trucker Josh on a plane. Tomorrow. I'm gonna have to cut my hair. So as you probably know at this point, this is post truck world when I'm filming this last clip. Just wanted to say thank you for watching today's video. I really appreciate it. Truck world begins through the vlogs tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow's video is us getting on the plane and headed over there. And then there's a couple of days of truck world, a lot of video montage. Since there's a lot of music playing pretty loudly in the background of a lot of my footage of truck world, I wasn't able to uh, uh, 
vlog normally while I'm there, otherwise I get copyright strikes on everything, right? And uh, it was very difficult to uh, even just find a chance to vlog. We were so busy there. There were so many of you who came to visit, which was awesome. I didn't really have a chance to do a regular vlog through the day, but uh, I am starting to put them together now. So the first one will be out tomorrow. And uh, I think they turned out pretty good. I think they turned out pretty good. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm excited to share that experience with you. It was, it was something I'll remember forever. And uh, I hope for those of you who did come out, I hope that uh, uh, you had a good time. But anyways, for today, it's the end of the vlog. Thanks for hanging out with me. I did not get attacked by the cobra chickens. I was nice. I didn't uh, aggravate them or provoke them too much. But you know, maybe one day we will. I don't really like starting fights, you know. I don't like starting fights with cobra chickens. But I'll finish them. You know, if they ever come, if they ever come at me, I'm ready. And I'll fight a cobra chicken, like I said. It's just no use in starting a fight for no reason, right? I was always taught, pick your battles wisely. Yeah. Besides, no use getting all beat up for Truck World, right? I was going to Truck World the next day. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and uh, we'll, we'll see you tomorrow. Trucker on a plane tomorrow. <laughs>